want to make sure she gets on. I'd like to call the meeting of the Board of Zoning Appeals to order on this Monday, April the 5th, Dingus Day. Go right ahead, Ms. Kukla. Good morning. My name is Liz Kukla. I'm the Secretary of the Board of Zoning Appeals, and I'm going to read the preamble this morning. In compliance with notification requirements of Ohio's open meeting law under COVID-19 emergency declaration, notice of this meeting has been publicly posted. All boards and commissions under the purview of the city planning department conducts its meetings according to Robert's rules of order. Actions during the meeting will be taken by voice vote. Abstentions from any vote due to a conflict of interest should be stated for the record prior to the taking of any vote. In order to ensure that everyone participating in the meeting have the opportunity to be heard, we ask that you use the raise hand feature before asking a question or making a comment. The raise hand feature can be found in the participants panel on the desktop and mobile version and activated by clicking the hand icon. <laughs> Please wait for the chair or facilitator to recognize you and be sure to select to unmute. Maurice, is that star six nine also to unmute yourself? Uh, star six for call in users. Star six, thank you. And announce yourself before you speak. When finished speaking, please lower your hand by clicking on the raise hand icon again and mute your microphone. We will also be utilizing the chat feature to communicate with participants. The chat feature can be activated by clicking the chat button located on the bottom of the WebEx screen. All meeting activity is being recorded via the WebEx platform. These proceedings are also being live streamed via YouTube for public view. We have provided a link to the meeting for those who wish to speak on a particular case via our website and email. We have also received emails from those who have provided written comment on a particular matter. And as a reminder to unmute yourself, call in users, please use star six. Thanks very much. Let's do a roll call, please. Ms. Thank, thank you, Madam Chair. Ms. Britt will not be joining us this morning, but we have Ms. Faith. I am present. Thank you. Yep. Mr. Donovan. Here. Ms. Barnes. Here. And Ms. Johnson. Yes, I'm here. Madam Chair, we have a quorum. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll announce the postponed cases. Calendar 21-037 at 2168 West 32nd has previously been postponed till May the 24th. We have calendar 20-187 has been previously postponed to, it is the first National Bank of Pens Pennsylvania appeal on a uh, violation notice on West 98th Street. It's been postponed till April 26th. And the following case is going to be withdrawn, calendar 21-004 at 1470 East 116th. Without objection, board? Without objection. Without Madam objection. Chair, we yeah. also, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Donovan. We also have that uh, BCA calendar 21-44 regarding oh, yes. 7723 Harvard. They're requesting a postponement for two months so that they can work with building and housing to uh, update their drawings to comply with code. Okay, and we'd we like just, to postpone that till June 28th without objection, board. Without objection. Without, without objection. objection. Okay, great. Moving right along. Go ahead. Thank you, Madam Chair. Calendar number 21 039 at 4005 Woodbine Avenue. John uh, Nyamber. Sorry for the mispronunciation. Owner proposes to construct a two-story house addition on a 2,112 square foot lot in a B1 two-family residential district. The owner appeals for relief from the strict application of the Cleveland Codified Ordinances as stated in the agenda and the public record. Thank you very much, Tim. For all those for this case, kindly raise your right hand. I'm going to read a statement. I'm looking for a response only for those that are testifying on this case of either I do and your name. Here we go. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give 
is the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Anyone here for this case? I am. I do. I do. Your name? John Nineber. You are the owner. owner. Oh, okay, good. Anyone else? Okay. Appearing, appearing that, we move forward. Okay. History of the property, please, Mrs. Kukla. Thank you, Madam Chair. The property was zoned multifamily in 1929. In 1985, it was placed in the two family district. The records room I found, and this is the building housing records room. I found that in 1906, a permit was issued to erect an addition. There are no variances on file for this address. And in the more recent history, I only found that in 2006, a permit was issued to install new windows. In 2019, a permit was issued to install a new door. And that's all that I have that's relevant. Thank you very much. The legal standard, please, Ms. Wagner. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. Appellant is requesting area variances from the rear yard and minimum lot requirements of the zoning code. To obtain the area variances, appellant must prove that denying the request will create a practical difficulty not generally shared with other land or buildings in the same district, will deprive the appellant of substantial property rights, and that granting the variances will not be contrary to the purpose and intent of the zoning code. Thank you very much. Good morning, John. Tell us exactly what you'd like to do. Uh, I'm looking <clears throat> at uh, adding in a, a one car garage and uh, a room up above the uh, the one car garage, um, which would be our new master bedroom and uh, adding in uh, stairs that aren't so steep with the uh, traditional 1890 house. So that's, that's the basic plan. There is just a one car garage and room and stairs. Well, I'm trying to see it. Hold on. I've got to magnify this 100 times. <laughs> Can someone address the specific issues in terms of the variance? Are they side yard? How many? How much? Is, is this going to extend over the original footprint of the house? Uh, it's going to, yes, it's going to be over the original footprint of the house. Okay. Hang in there, I'm looking. Maurice, Maurice you can see this better than I can. Um, there you go, I just zoomed in on the site plan, if that makes more sense on the Yes, thank you. On the right hand side is the existing dwelling and then on the left hand side is the new garage and second floor addition. Okay, and the distance to the property line is 5 foot 6 inches. Looks like it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Then I'm reading this. Okay. All right. What the... The existing driveway on the opposite side is for the neighbor's house. Is that my understanding? Uh, yes, exactly. That's the neighbor's oh. house. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, there's nobody else to call on Maurice city of Cleveland. Um, I just want to uh, point oh. out that we did get a letter from uh, Don Pettit from the secretary of the oh, landmarks yeah. commission and they did on uh, February 11th approve approve this design and they are supportive of this design and so the planning commission is also supportive of this design there's really they're not making uh they're not adding to the existing uh non-conformities on the property so we definitely are recommending approval of this project okay are there no other questions board i will entertain a motion madam chair this is liz kukla yes just as a clarification and just for the record this is just a variance for a seven foot seven inch rear yard and as you know um 20 foot rear yards are required just for the record i wanted you to um be aware of that issue not in 1900. <laughs> oh, great thanks thank you well and the, the existing rear yard is is seven foot seven inches yes and they're not exactly. they're not encroaching any further into that yes yeah. exactly okay can I have a motion, please? 
Yes. Madam Chair, given the approval of uh, landmarks and city planning, and noting on the plan that the rear yard setback is seven foot seven, that's existing, uh, that's not changing. Uh, I move that we approve this variance. Second. Call the roll. Mr. Donovan. S yes. Ms. Bates? Yes. Ms. Barnes? Barnes, yes. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Calendar 21-39 is granted. It'll be ratified next week and we will send you a letter. Thanks, John. Uh, sorry, yeah. one, one thing I just uh, disconnected. Uh, was everything approved there then? Yes, yes sir. <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you John, good luck. Yep. 20, to calendar 21-042. At 18526 Glenfield Road. Go ahead, Ms. Faith. Thank you, Madam Chair. This is calendar number 21 042 at 18526 Glenfield Road. Valerie Pinkard, owner, proposes to erect a one story frame single family residence bedroom addition with attached garage which will connect to the existing detached garage in a B1 two family residential district. The owner appeals for the strict re for the relief of the strict application of the Cleveland codified ordinances as stated in the agenda and the public record. Thank you very much, Tim. Everyone for this case, kindly raise your right hand. I'm gonna make a statement looking for a response of I do and your name. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. I do. Kurt Weaver. Thank you. Next. Anyone else besides Kurt? Valerie? Yes. Okay. That's what I'm looking for, Valerie. Anyone else? City planning, anything? Hearing none, we move to history. Okay, history of the property. Thank you, Madam Chair. There has been no change in the zoning since 1929. In the building and housing records room, I found that in 1960, a permit was issued to enclose the front porch to single family residents. Uh, there are no variances on file. And in the more recent history, I found that a permit was issued or sorry, a permit was applied for, but not issued to replace eight windows on the property. And that's all that I have that's relevant. Thank you very much. The legal standard, please, Ms. Roger. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. Appellant is requesting area variances from the side yard, rear yard, and distance requirements of the zoning code. To obtain the area variances, appellant must prove that denying the request will create a practical difficulty not generally shared by other land or buildings in the same district, will deprive the appellant of substantial property rights, and the granting the variances will not be contrary to the purpose and intent of the zoning code. Thank you very much. Bert, are you going to be the good, good morning, person? Madam Chair? Yes, I will speak to the project initially. Um, thank you, uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, uh, Kurt Weaver, architect. Um, Maurice, if you could go, do you have the aerial photograph of the site for us? Um, I have one that I did, yes. Okay, that'll work great. Thank you. So um, I thought I'd start by just mentioning that um, not unlike so many properties in the city of Cleveland, this is a, a very unique uh, sort of geographic configuration. Um, Glenfield uh, in the photograph that we're looking at, at comes from the west and loops around to the south and then returns back to the west on Underwood. For those of you familiar with the East 185th Street corridor, McBill's beverage is just over here off the corner. Um, so we have a very unique um, sort of neighborhood tucked in behind that commercial strip. This, uh, the adjacent neighbors to the east, um, which I believe this is Neff Road over here, they're above us. So this, the property is above and then there's like retaining walls along here and there's, there's a staircase access. But our, we have a neighbor here, we have a neighbor here, 
We have a neighbor immediately behind us and a neighbor off to this side. Um, Ms. Pinkard's house is this small uh, one story. I think it's 990 square feet of livable space. And then the, the car garage, which is detached over here. So if we go to our, our site plan or our building plans, um, we're asking that we were that we're able to do um, a building addition that would add on to the garage here and then bridge across and connect to the home. And maybe there's maybe the floor plan, Maurice, if you would, please. I just want to point out that the dotted line, uh, correct, Mr. Weaver, is the uh, is the actual addition, correct, on the site plan there? Yeah, so on this particular site plan, correct, because it's a site preparation plan. So just for your edification, Carol. Thank you. Uh, yeah, let me move forward. What are the elevations? This Let's see. Back up. Two. There you go. That one. Okay, we could go here as a floor plan. So okay. here's the 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 existing house is here to the to the north. The existing garage is here to the east, and then this will be the garage addition. We've held the pro the the surfaces of the garage, the the line on the back property line here. We've held. And then when we come up to where the addition is, we bump up so that we get the five foot dimension between the, the back of the house and the back property line here. Because uh, we know that's a, a building and housing requirement. We've held the same five feet over here on the on the west property line. There's actually a small cleft between the addition and next here at where the back, the existing back porch is being replaced. Because that allows all of our existing infrastructure to remain in place and and really helps us a lot with being able to to manage this on a very tight site. We've had to step our front garage. So our garage is a little shorter here. Um, to allow our side door access to remain in that location where the existing back porch is being replaced. If you flip to the elevations, Maurice, if you would, I can show you that on the elevations then. Uh, across the top are the existing elevations. So you, here you see again that front elevation of the home, the space, and then the existing one car garage off to the side. And then the new front elevation is immediately below that. So you see the front elevation and then way, way beyond will be the existing garage door replaced and then the new garage door. And then if you look at it from the east side, it's the existing elevation and then the existing garage we're going to encapsulate with, by dragging the new roof form that uh, runs all the way across running east to west to uh, connect everything. So if there are any other questions, I'd be happy to answer. And uh, perhaps this would be a good time for uh, Ms. Pinkard to uh, introduce herself and share her vision. Valerie? Hi. Hi. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yes, you can. Okay. All right, so I'd like to thank the committee for allowing me to express uh, my concerns. Uh, I really love my home on Glenfield. It's a quiet area, but as you can see, I've lived here a number of years, and I see I need more security, and having the attached garage uh, would be in my best interest. I've looked to move in the past, but not really finding anything that I need. So I thought the addition would not only give me more security uh, as I enter, but also it would help because of having a, a laundry on the first floor. If ever I get to the point for health reasons, I'm not able to tackle my steep stairs to the basement. So I'm excited about the project, uh, mainly to feel more secure and to make it easier for me as I age. So thank you very much for listening and considering my plan. Thank you very much, Billy. City okay. planning. Cool. Any other questions, board? Uh, ben, I'm here to Mr. Weaver. Um, could you could you tell us? It's difficult to see the plan on on the screen. Could you uh, for variance uh, section number one and section number two? 
could you give us the existing side yard as it as it is now and also the setback for the rear yard as it is now? Those dimensions. Madam Chair, uh, to, to respond to the question, um, I think if we zoom in on this photograph, Maurice, that there is actually dimensions on here. But the question you're asking is about this eastern. So here's the existing garage, and here's the east property line that runs between the existing one car garage here and the neighbor's adjacent one car garage here. And it, I believe if I remember correctly, it's it's like 36 inches between these two structures and the assumption that the property line runs right down between. So that's 18 inch dimension. And then you have a very similar dimension along this, uh, what would be the south property line where the existing garage is nominally 18 inches. I think there's a dimension right here uh, off of that south property line. So the rear setback now is uh, at 36 inches or? Um, the the yes. setback is actually 18 inches because it's from the property line. The dimension between the structures is 36 here. And I don't remember what the dimension off the, there's a, there's a chain link fence that runs along the south line. And I can't remember what this dimension is right here. It looks, I, I always represent everything as graphically accurate as I can when I'm out in the field measuring stuff. So if this is an 18 inch dimension on this, on our side of the property, it would look to be uh, maybe a little more than two feet on this side. So you've probably got in the neighborhood of four or maybe, maybe five feet between the two structures uh, to the south. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Board? Maurice, City of Cleveland? Yeah, Madam Chair. So it looks like to me that uh, the 18 inches that they're referring to over here next to the garage was, was meeting code because you only need to be 18 inches off the property line for a garage. But because they're attaching a new garage, which is then attached to the main structure, and correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Riccardi, that's what generates the variance request or the need for a variance because, right, it goes from 18 inches to three feet when you attach the garage to the house because it becomes part of the house. Um, so that's the reason for variance number one. Um, and variance number two is, you know, as we just discussed, it's that 18 inches back here behind, which again is actually an existing condition. And then they're just extending a portion of the house parallel with the uh, the face of the, the rear face of the garage we uh, we support both of these variances okay any other questions board i'll entertain a motion madam chair yes. based on the testimony given here i find it the variance to be consistent with the existing uh, situation at that address and given the Review and support of city planning. I move that we grant the variance. Second. Roll the roll. Second. Ms. Faith. Yes. Mr. Donovan. Yes. Ms. Yeah. Barnes. I'm sorry, I didn't hear Ms. Barnes. Marlene. We need your vote, Marlene. Okay, we can go on without her. We'll still have uh, enough folks to pass this. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Calendar 21-42 is granted. It'll be ratified next week and we will send you a letter. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Calendar 21-043. Go ahead, Ms. Faith. Thank you, Madam Chair. Calendar number 21. That's 043 at 8399 Huff Avenue. A diamond in the Huff owner proposes to establish it as a carryout restaurant in a C2 multifamily residential district. The owner appeals for relief from the strict application of the Cleveland Codified Ordinance as it states 
in the agenda and the public record. Thank you very much. Tim, go ahead. Everyone for this case, kindly raise your hand. Again, I'll read a statement looking for a response if I do with your name. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. In Van Ness. I do. Any others? I do. Dino DeSantis. Anyone else? Last call. That's it. Moving on. History of the property, please, Mrs. Kuka. Thank you, Madam Chair. The property was originally zoned general retail. In 1983, it was changed to multifamily. In 1996, it was changed to local retail. In 2012, it was changed back to multifamily. In the building and housing records room, I only found that in 1969, a permit was issued to apply new exterior surfaces on an abandoned gas station. There are no variances on file. And in the more recent history, we found that in 2008, an invoice was assessed to the property to board an opening, one opening on the property. 2009, a permit was issued to re-roof the property. Um, again, in 2009, in August of 2009, a boarding fee was assessed to the property. 2010, the applicants or the owners attempted to establish a takeout restaurant. That permit was closed and is there's a note stating that it was non-compliant. In 2019, a, red, a certificate of disclosure was issued stating that the legal authorized use of the property is as a gas station. And that is all that I have that is relevant, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. Good morning, Diamond and the Rough People, or Diamond and the Huff People. <laughs> Legal standard, uh, Madam Chair. Oh, please, yes. Go ahead, Ms. Thank you, Madam Thank you. Chair, members of the board. Appellant is requesting a use variance. To obtain the use variance, appellant must prove that denying the request will result in an unnecessary hardship, particularly to the property, such as there will be no economically feasible use of the property without the variance, will deprive the appellant of substantial property rights, and the granting the variance not be contrary to the purpose and intent of the zoning code. Thank you very much, Ms. Wagner. Sorry about that. Um, okay, to the owners, tell us like what exactly you'd like to do here. Uh, good morning. Uh, first of all, it wasn't our intention to come in and try to challenge you guys. Uh, we got in possession of the property. I was going to give the previous owner a price to uh, finish what he had started, which was he wanted to take out restaurant back in 2010. And we had all his blueprints and things like that. And we ended up buying the building from him and not realizing that the zoning has changed, to be honest with you. And that's, that's why we're here today. We always assumed that it was going to be a takeout restaurant. Like I said, we didn't intend to come here to challenge you. Uh, and uh, we would like to put in a, a pizza place. Uh, I think we have a lot of uh, support in the community for something like that. It's an, a, a food oasis on Huff, and uh, we don't intend to sell beer and wine or anything like that. Just uh, maybe eight till eight o'clock, eight a.m. to eight p.m. type of takeout restaurant. Well, I don't see anyone eating pizza at eight a.m., and I see them eating it later than eight p.m. So I'm just wondering if those times are really well. Again, we we started out with uh, Huff Heights Pizza and listening to a lot of people, especially the people from across the street, which is the Neon Health Clinic. Uh, we we're trying to offer healthy foods at any time of the day. Oh, and uh, the days of the week that you would be opened? Uh, we would like to be open seven days a week. Our hours, we're going to try to stay consistent with the, the Neon Health Center across the street. They're open seven days and they're open until nine o'clock, I think, on the weekends. Okay. With COVID, I'm not sure if the hours have changed, but that's what they always were operating at. You've got a lot of improvement to the property to make. 
Uh, I'm very aware of that. Uh, oh. I, I, we did have a uh, an official uh, building inspector come in, a uh, professional building inspection, and uh, I am a contractor, I'm licensed in a couple trades. I work for Ms. Van Ness. She actually owns the construction company, and um, it's a it's, it's a insane. challenge, but nothing we really couldn't handle. Uh, I, there's quite a bit of, uh, it looks like two curb cuts there. To have well, to eliminate one. Our intention was actually use the same blueprints that the gentleman that we purchased, that Ms. Van Ness purchased the property from. It was all approved by the city of Cleveland with the same admin back in 2010 for what we intend to do. We just want to replicate what he was trying to do and well that didn't go very well did it well he 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 ran out of money you know he got all he got to the point where they got all his permits the blueprints i mean we have his stamped uh blueprints from the city and his his agenda and who he had to call all the inspectors and things like that i'm sure these inspectors are probably retired by now since it's been 10 years uh we um, we, we do have Maurice. the my Parking. question, to, hold on a moment. And my question is about all those driveways. Am I look, seeing this right? I don't have another plan that shows the, the overall. Yeah, we don't, we don't have a site plan for this project. So I, I couldn't answer that other than what the photos are showing. It looks like there's one curb cut in the front on Huff. Um, and then I'm there's one the over here. If you look at the top left photograph, that's being currently blocked by this. Uh, um, guardrail uh, and that's it because I if you look down on the bottom right you can see there is no curb cut other than over by the guardrail does it show where the dumpsters are yes go ahead sir again we were using the same prints as the previous owner and I think he might have made one of the curb cuts on east 84th mm -hmm. I also like to state that we do have the parking lot next door that is owned by uh, Ms. Van S, and we were going to intend to use that as well with this property and, and hopefully even get a drive through in. There's uh, enough but, for a drive through according to your uh, zoning. Yeah, line. but that's not before us today. You'd have to come back again. Um, I understand. Board, I just. Have, I, I want to hear from the board, uh, Tim or uh, Faith or Marlene. Ms. Faith, did you have? I, I have a couple questions, Madam Chair. Um, to the appellant, uh, is it your intent to keep that guardrail on no. um, East 84th Street? Is it your is intent to remove that? It is not our intention to keep the guardrail. And to be honest with you, I think that all those guardrails have been removed. That's an old picture from Google. Well, this picture was taken two weeks ago. They they removed well, they removed a lot of the guardrail. That's my car right there, the blue car. I took this picture less than two weeks ago. There's actually more guardrail than that up. They they probably just didn't get to the rest of it. We we do intend on on making it whole, taking down the guardrail, whatever is necessary and is it your intent to use those curb cuts on east 84th yes it is it, it is our intent to replicate the approved building plans from before and we did submit those uh i'm not sure whose hands they are in but there I is never received at least those. i'm sorry Madam Chair, I never received any anything other than the, the 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 drawings that I've shown you here. I have no site plan. I or anything turned, else. I have these four drawings. That's it. They were turned into a Miss Jones, Cassandra Jones. I'm not sure what department she is in. That's the inside. What you see is the inside and what the pizza shop was going to look like. Madam Chair, well, it appears that we're missing key information again to and if you do make a decision. To... Excuse me, sir. Right. Uh, I think that uh, given the fact that there is not a site plan that shows 
which curb cuts stay, where the landscaping is, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Uh, we'll have unanswered questions and we're making it up as we go here. So yeah. when we face those kinds of situations, we usually allow the appellant to ask for a postponement so they could rework and, and give us the site plan in this case that will allow us to make a ruling on his case. Who was the planner for that area? Okay. That would be Kim Scott. Kim Scott. Do we have a phone number that we could give to this gentleman? Or absolutely, he's already been in contact with uh, Miss Miss Scott. Ms. Scott. Okay. Yeah, we need to have those plans in our hands so that we can review them right. prior to granting anything. So I think it would be in your favor to ask for a postponement until all that is handled mm -hmm. properly. And Madam Chair, this is Liz Kukla. We could get him back on the agenda for the 19th. That would be two weeks. If we have the plans by, by when? Oh, if we have the plans by the Wednesday before the 19th. So that would be April 14th. Is that enough time, Maurice? Sure. That's next Wednesday, yeah. Does that give the appellant enough time to pull those things together? It sounds as though concerned? he has already submitted them to the city and I will do my best to find where they are. Um, we can okay. uh, let him know tomorrow if, if or the or by Wednesday if we're unable to find them. Yes, Mr. Go ahead, sir. Uh, I, 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 I turned into two sets of plans. Um, one and again, these are all plans that were already pre-stamped with the city and all that stuff. I gave one set to the building department, which is probably how you ended up with the equipment list. If you ended up with the equipment list, the uh, site plan and all the blueprints are floating around with that. There's at least two sets that the city of Cleveland has in their possession. I don't know who was, you know, I'm not sure what department everyone was working in, but I was, uh, submitting plans as I was asked to every time. So I wasn't aware that you did not have the plans. I assumed that you would, you know. Okay. We will find the plans. Is that my understanding, Mrs. Kukla? Yes, Madam Chair. Okay, we're gonna track them down. Will you then contact the gentleman? Yes, yes. we'll let him know. Okay, and then so let's let's put it on the schedule for um, two weeks, just in case. Now, Madam Chair, just to note, uh, in the history of this particular parcel, we've seen almost a ping pong game of changing the zoning code in which it has to comply with. So, ten years ago, you know, the, the zoning may have changed. Now we have to address those issues in terms of the variance. So that's why we need the site plans not only to be given forward, but to make sure that we update them to address any of those type of concerns. Thank you, Tim. Appreciate that. Okay, we're going to postpone the case to what was the date, please, Mrs. Kuka? April 19th. Okay. Without objection, board? Without objection. Without objection. Uh Without objection. Madam Chair, okay. Okay. Madam Chair. Yes. Excuse me, Madam Chair. Uh, can can we make sure that the appellant is clear on what we want to see in those plans since he's submitting plans that were previously drawn for this? And yes. if, if it's been 10 years, there may be changes. So if he's anticipating a drive through, then we need to know what the traffic flow is. We need to be no, sure that there is not before us. He's not, that's not before us, the, the, the drive through, because he, don't, you know, we're not talking about the extra property. Right, right. So when, I'm not talking so about we're the just extra concerned property. About, yeah, this property uh, right now. I'm not, Thank I'm you. not discussing the. I just want to make sure that he's clear on what he needs to include. So he comes back prepared. I'd hope Kim Thank Scott you. would help with that. Yes, and I would hope Mrs. Copa could kind of, uh, or hate to put the ball in her court, but I think we need to do that. So, Madam Chair, from the discussion today, it sounds as though we want to see where the curb cuts are 
and mm -hmm. any landscaping that he's proposing and showing that the, the guardrails are going to be removed or that they're not proposed in the future plan. Is there anything else that uh, was discussed that I'm missing? Just the the fact that the if the law has the ordinance has changed since in the last ten years, are we including everything then? Probably things like parking. Yes, and the landscaping plan, et cetera. Okay. Okay. Right, you have your hand up, sir. Again. Yes. Uh, again, I just want to be very clear that I did submit. Two full sets of plans. And we're going to find first. where they got lost to. Okay, and Mrs. Really, Cooper will, will contact I, you. I just, I feel that I was prepared. That's all. So I, I it's, you know, I, I don't know what more. Apologies. I, yeah. At, after this point, I'm not sure what I could provide other than a third set of the plans that I have, but but there is two sets floating around at the city city hall. I turned in one at the front door and turned in one at the back door downstairs. Full full drawings with site plan and curb cuts and all those things. Madam Chair, I did just find something that was sent to Kim Scott, the neighborhood planner from this gentleman here. I'm sharing it with you now. Well, look, I'm too smart. But that's all I have. I don't have. Oh, any it, other you don't have I mean, okay. So we, we know they're we know they're in somebody's hands. We just don't have them where we have reviewed them. Okay. You do have the plans. Well, it sh shows on the what I'm looking at now here, but I, but I don't have the well, no, plan. Miss plan. I just know that Kim Scott got a set. Well, she didn't. Well, I think that this gentleman just is. Is this from you, Mister? Uh, is this DeSant Mr. DeSantis that we talked yes. to? Yes. I did you send this? Uh I didn't send what's on the screen. I didn't send that. I only turned oh. in blueprints. Okay. Uh Miss Scott had asked for a digital file after we had already turned in the plans when we were e uh emailing with her um about a week and a half ago. So probably what you would have via Miss Scott would be a digital picture of the drawings. So there were just two two photos that I had sent her uh, um, from the restaurant because uh, those first two sets were already turned in and it didn't sound like she was gonna be able to get her hands on those before um, before this meeting. And she's on the- she, Yeah, she, she mentioned that she was gonna be out of town. So she was looking for a digital file to review before she went out of town. Uh, Madam Chair, can I ask Mr. Uh, Riccardi, has he seen these these uh, these plans? We just have to wait for him to type. Rick. Well. Oh, what did where did these appear from? Those, Those were from the email. That was that were sent to Miss Scott. Madam Chair, the late arrival of the information, it's good that we get the information, but we're not going to have the time to assess it. It's time to close this and move on with the new date. Uh, yeah, oh, so Madam Chair, this is Liz Kukla. They were not written up for any um, landscaping issues or curb cuts being too close to each other or anything like that. Um, that site plan leads me to believe that there aren't there aren't any other non-conformances that would be present. Oh, it needs to be reviewed. I'm sorry. 
because that landscaping, we really need to see that. Okay, we've got to postpone now until the 19th. Liz, can you at least follow through with, put that in the right hands? Yes. Yeah. Okay. We're postponing it till the 19th, Mr. DeSanto, and we'll, um, Mrs. This Cooper will call you if there's any problems, okay? Do you have, you have the proper um, plans? Do I need to do anything? No, you just have to sit quietly and be patient. So, Madam Chair, okay. those drawings look like, uh, sorry, those photos of the drawings look like um, the paper copies that would have been submitted as the appellant yes. stated. So, um, if those are the paper copies, then that's all I would have when I find them here at the city. So, um, from what I'm hearing, you want more detail on the landscaping? Yes. You want to see plantings and such? Plus the curb cuts, I mean. The curb cuts were on the drawing, just for the record, it looked like. How many? I don't know if and we can again, go this back. Is a, this is again an assessment again that needs to happen, but we shouldn't have it happen at our table. There were two, I believe. One at the front on Huff and then one on the side. It, it needs to be reviewed by planning rapidly. And um, Maurice, did you state that um, that this is this is in Kim Scott's area and that she has talked to them or seen this? Yes, yes, that was her email that she sent to me. Uh, she has been in conversations with them. Did she indicate needing to review it more? Or did she state that she wanted to um, that she supported it? Uh, she wanted to review it. Okay, no. thanks. It'll be postponed to the 19th, Madam Chair, right. if they're right. Okay. We did that already. Uh, Madam Chair, just uh, something a little bit. What was the date that the uh, Harvard Avenue was uh, postponed to, or Ms. Kukla? June twenty eighth. June twenty eighth, right? Yeah, that was for uh, Slavic Village. I believe they're still on the line. June twenty eighth. The Harvard Avenue was postponed to June twenty eighth. Okay. And we postponed off till April nineteenth. Thank you all. Mrs. Coco, balls in your court. Thank you. Okie doke. Moving right yes. along. Calendar, Ms. Faith, 21-045, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Calendar number 21-045 at 1920 West 58th Street. Matt Dubell, 3D Communities LLC owner, proposes to renovate the existing single family house and add a second floor addition in a B1 two family residential district. The owner appeals for relief from the strict application of the Cleveland Codified Ordinances as stated in the agenda and the public record. Thank you very much, Tim. Yes, with everyone for this case, kindly raise your right hand if you're going to give testimony. Uh, I'm going to read a statement at the end that your response is I do with your name. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do, Paul Began. Anyone else? City planning, anyone? Hearing none, we move to history. Thank you, Mr. Donovan. The property was originally zoned, oh, I'm sorry, Madam Chair, there's been no change in the zoning since 1929. In the building and housing records room, I found that in 1955, a permit was issued to erect a private garage. In 1976, a permit was issued to install aluminum siding to a dwelling. 1976, a permit was issued to erect a radio tower. Uh, there are no variances on file and in the more recent history in our system, I found that a permit was issued 
in 2014 to install one single door. And that's all that I have, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. The legal standard will be judging, please, Ms. Wagner. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. Appellant is requesting area variances from the side yard and side yard encroachment requirements of the zoning code. To obtain the area variances, appellant must prove that denying the request will create a practical difficulty not generally shared by other land or buildings in the same district, will deprive the appellant of substantial property rights, and that granting the variances will not be contrary to the purpose and intent of the zoning code. Thank you very much. Paul, are you going to be the spokesperson for Emerald Development? Yes, Madam Chair. Uh, Paul Began from Began uh, Architectural Design. Um, the Dubells um, are have purchased this you house. Have a letter, letter, do you have a letter, Paul, saying that you could represent them? Um, I do, and I, I believe it was uh, already submitted to Ms. Kukla. Okay, great. Go right ahead then. Um, and actually, I was anticipating them to being uh, on the call this morning uh, at least one one of the uh the, the brothers or cousins but uh, apparently not um but anyways let, let me proceed so that you can move on with the rest of your docket um this is an existing house um what we're doing to it is there's an, uh, a little enclosed uh patio on the back of it that's falling down that is going to be removed um yeah, that aerial photo. Yeah, there you go. Uh, that's going to be removed. And there actually is a little bit of a second floor up there now. I know on that one photo on the lower right that you can see that window. It's about four feet tall uh, up in that second floor space. So we're, so we're going to be actually removing the roof on the back portion of this house and putting an, an appropriate second floor onto there so that we can have two bedrooms uh, in there reason for the uh, uh request for variance is because really the existing house is non-conforming uh we are not adding to the house other than up uh on this we're not extending the footprint in at all um so the the uh, three uh requests for variance are because of the existing house uh encroaching into uh that side yard setback So where's the one foot problem between the houses? I thought. Yeah, it is. The side yard is. is go ahead. It is on the site plan right here is probably the best thing. Thanks, Maurice, for uh, zooming in there. You can, you can kind of see the existing house is is, you know, a, a foot away from the property line. So that's that's the the reason why, um, that, you know, it, we don't have the three feet because that's not what the house was sitting. It's sitting a, a foot away from the property line and, and that's what we have to do. So anything, any modifications that we make uh, to this house is going to require brands. So that's exactly what's happened. Well, it's the original, so damned if we do, damned if we don't. Hello. Yeah. So you can see on, on the elevations there, I mean, really what we're doing is, is just you know, popping up on the back half of the house um, in addition so that we can have two bedrooms in, into this, uh, this small house. City planning. City planning. Madam, Madam Chair, uh, H I believe the HDRS committee reviewed and approved this project. And as Mr. Began stated, uh, you know, these are all existing very are existing conditions uh, from the house um, and he's not changing the footprint at all so they'll they'll just you know the the uh, existing conditions will not be uh made worse than what they are now so this is uh and this is a great uh, uh reuse of this property put this house back into circulation and get people living in it so yeah we definitely uh, support the variance mm -hmm. no other questions i will entertain a motion madam chair based on the testimony given noting that the footprint of the house is an existing footprint and there will be no further encroachment in terms of the distance between it and the adjacent home support of city planning i move we grant the variance second second okay call the roll 
Ms. Bain? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yep. Ms. Barnes? Yes. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Calendar 21-45 is granted. It'll be ratified next week and we will send you a letter. Thank you, committee and uh, Ms. Kukla. Have a good week. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank okay. you. Okay. Old business. Madam Chair, we this still have Brook Brookside Boulevard on here. I thought that's, what, that's just what we did. No, no we did West 58th. Oh, really? Yes, you're right. Okay, then calendar 21-035. Go right ahead, Ms. Faith. Thank you, Madam Chair. Calendar number 21-035 at 3907 Brookside Boulevard. This case was postponed from March 15th, 2021. Emerald Development and Economic Network Inc. owner proposes to erect a new one-story single-family house in an A1 one-family residential district. The owner appeals for relief from the strict application of the Cleveland Codified Ordinances as stated in the agenda and the public record. Go ahead, Tim. Okay, well, everyone for this case, kindly raise your right hand. Here we go. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Looking for I do in your name. Uh, I do, Ethan Rothermel. I do, Melissa Miller. I do, Richard Carr. Anyone else? Hearing none, off to the no. history. Thank you. I believe we've had all that before, Mike. Yes, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, I think it's important to state that at the last hearing, the appellant had the front yard issue and that the drawings have been revised and uh, reviewed again by building and housing. So the notice of non-conformance that you see today is based on the revised drawing that was submitted to us as well as building and housing. So, so Madam Chair, this is the previous, yeah. um, this is the previous description. The new description requires um, variances from section 357.09 regarding the, the minimum required interior side yard is 10 feet and one foot and three inches are provided. Section 357.08B1, which states that a rear yard of no less than 20 feet is required and 17 feet, 18 inches are now proposed. Um, section 349.04A, which states that one legally non-conforming, sorry, one legally conforming accessory off-street parking space is required, and any parking space must be 10 feet from the wall of a main building on the lot per section 349.05. The proposed parking space is closer than 10 feet to the wall of the main building on the lot. Those are the new um, code sections that they'll need a variance from today, and those were posted in the the city record as well as sent to the neighboring property owners. Thank you very much. I'd like to hear from all these folks that have been sworn in. Uh, Let's start with who, who have I got first? Ethan? Uh, yeah, Ethan. Uh, I am with Architecture Office. Um, uh, like like uh, Liz had said, we, uh, we were here last time uh, and we uh, we're not able to uh, receive the variances because of the front yard setback issue. Um, we have since uh, shifted the house to uh, sit behind the front yard setback. Um, and as you can see, uh, we really, the, the way that this lot is shaped, there really is no other way to, you know, fit the house on this lot. Um, it, especially with the wedge shape, uh, putting a parking space in the rear. Um, we just physically can't get it 10 feet away from the house. Um, so this is really the best we can do. Um, um, also, uh, like we had stated previously, you know, the form of the house tries to follow the curb of the road uh, along the front. Um, and we have the porch that steps back 
um, in the portion that went over the front yard yeah. setback. Um, and the uh, one foot, three inch uh, side oh, yard yeah. setback is really, again, the best we can do uh, with, you know, you know, keeping a driveway on the lot and, uh, you know, creating proper clearances around the property. Okay, I'd like to hear from uh, Melissa next. Thank you, Ms. Johnson and the board. Um, with regard to this, you know, we understand the need. need to say, I know who you are, but you need to say your name and the organization. Oh, I'm sorry, Melissa Miller, Bel Air Puritus <laughs> Development Corporation. Thank um, you. you know, we understand the need for these variances based on um, the need for the house and you know, the, the, the purpose of the house and why this house is designed this way to be accessible to people with mobility issues. Um, we have no problem with the variances as long as the neighbors um, still have full access to the property and it won't impinge on um, what they need to do on their own property. Thanks, Melissa. Richard? Members of the board, Madam Chair, my name is Richard Carr. I'm the Director of Real Estate Development and Construction for Emerald Development and Economic Network. Melissa, thank you for your uh, kind words. Um, yes, this is a replacement house that we had lost in a fire a number of years ago. As Melissa had stated, it's a, it is a facility that will house uh, a person with mobility impairments. And as stated, it is a replacement house. We believe that the real estate produces an undue hardship on the developer. And we're requesting for relief from, from the codified ordinances uh, for that reason. Thank you very much, Richard. Thank you. Board questions? Uh, did the city uh, review? No, I'm, what's I'm going to call Maurice next. Go ahead, Maurice. Well, I, it's. The city did review it because uh, we do have a new adjudication written up by uh, Mr. Riccardi. Um, so, and I believe uh, Liz, uh, Liz already uh, spoke about those, but uh, yes, we are, uh, we are in support of this project. Uh, this is a very irregularly shaped lot. It's difficult uh, to develop. And I think what makes it even more difficult here is the fact that you are trying to build a 1 story structure. Um, you know, to provide uh, access for someone who has mobility issues. Um, and so that's what is creating the difficulty here for this house. Uh, and so we, we totally support uh, the variances that they are requesting. Thank you. Any other comments board? I will entertain a motion. Now, uh, Madam chair, uh, based on the testimony uh, given and the changes made to address the issues that were Noticed prior, uh, I would move that we would grant the variance. I second it. Roll. Ms. Faith? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yep. Ms. Barnes? Yes. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Calendar 21 35 is granted. It'll be ratified next week and we will send you a letter. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Old Thank business. You. Go for it. Oh, hold on. Let me change the screen. There we go. Okay. Madam chair, before we read this, um, I received an, uh, an email this morning regarding BZA calendar number 20 dash 006 9501 Pierpont. If you remember that one was dismissed last week uh, due to a no show by the appellant and no communication from them. Um, the appellant stated that this was an oversight on their part, the scheduling. Um, they didn't realize that the hearing was that day, so they're requesting a reinstatement. Sure. How about a year from now? <laughs> mm -hmm. oh. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm sorry. And I'm yeah. fine with that. <laughs> what what are you thinking of Liz? Uh, we could put them at the end of April or the beginning of May. Beginning of May. All right, let's see what date that is. That would be May 2nd. 
Okay. Make sure they know there is no further. We're not going to be happy people. Okay. I'm going to do one, two, three without objection. First of all, without objection. Without objection. Without objection. Thank you. Now on the West 25th Street. His muting and unmuting was not working for whatever. And I think Liz sent everybody the copy of the letter he wrote. Correct. Yes. But he having issues with the barbershop clients and the tenants in the building parking area and the trash in the yard. He wants to come, but. So the appellant, I mean, sorry, the neighbor is asking for an opportunity to speak on the record about the uh, the issues that he's experiencing. And he believed that he would be able to do that at the hearing. Unfortunately, there was some technical difficulties. And um, to be fair, we did not, and we do not announce um, to the call-in users, uh, it hasn't generally been our practice until today that uh, you can unmute yourself with star six and maybe perhaps we should make that part of the um the the preamble that i read at the beginning yes right? that might be us evidently so i mean this is a real issue i mean this you know although this is the first time we've had this request uh i don't know if lori wants to speak to the legal ramifications in this case we also do have the appellant um present or his attorney or architect mr fisher is also present are they asking us to rehear the case? Not the appellant. The neighbor is asking for a rehearing. The adjacent neighbor. Yes. So in terms of standing, I would think they'd have standing. And that would be a question for Ms. Wagner. Yeah, this is, this is Lori Wagner. And this is kind of a difficult case because um, due to no fault of the appellant or the city, really, th this person did make an attempt to be at the meeting and speak. They would have a right to speak, and it probably is the best thing for the record to reopen it and allow their testimony be to be heard. But I did ask um, Liz to contact the appellant so they could, you know, state their opinion on this. So it would, it would be just to hear Mr. Quinones. Madam Chair, we have Gary Fisher with his hand raised. Okay, Gary. Hi, uh, this is Gary Fisher. I'm the architect on the project representing the owner. I do have the paperwork on file. Um, you know, again, we just go back to this is an issue where the owner of my project has repeatedly asked the owner of the adjacent property not to park in front of his building. Um, because he put a truck and a trailer there. If you look at the property next door that the uh, belongs to the neighbor, you'll notice that it is mostly parking. It is a car lot. So he has, you know, roughly two lots that are nothing but parking. And we have just the on-street parking and the parking at the rear. The owner has kept the property very clean. It's never a mess over there. There is parking for the tenants at the back. Um, and the barbershop tenants or clients, you know, come and go during the day. Um, you know, we're dealing with an urban area and, you know, it'd be lovely if we had a parking lot adjacent as well as, you know, every other business on West, West 25th, but that's just not the case. Oh, boy. This sounds like a civil matter, not not the board of zoning appeals if the so madam, is, go ahead madam go chair ahead, regarding Liz. the question about hearing uh, just his testimony i believe that i would have to uh, re-advertise and that we would have another hearing um, altogether so i guess it, it, it could be up to you if we're only going to hear that additional testimony um, but it will be re-advertised fully again the neighbors will be notified and it'll be posted in the city record or, Mr. Or, Fisher, Mr. Fisher has his hand raised again. Okay, Mr. Fisher. You know, again, this process has been going on. Legal notices were sent out. I mean, we are not real happy with this. Uh, 
you know, again, I'll have to talk to the owner. He'll probably have to talk to his attorney because everything was done the proper way from our standpoint. He's now being damaged because of further delay on being able to open this project. I mean, this has gone on for months and months. So again, it's obvious from looking at the aerial photo what the question is here. I guess I just don't understand why we would have to re-advertise when the tenants remain the same and the notices remain the same. Is the person who is objecting online? You know, or are they just delaying this because they can? You mean, are they on the call right now? Yes. I don't know. I guess with Al with their hands raised. Madam Chair, excuse me. Are we rehearing this case now? Are we going to reschedule? We do have someone else with their hand raised. Who? Who? Al. Or AI, I don't, that's all I see. Yes, my name is Al. I'm the owner of the property behind this building. The house? Correct. Are, are you the one asking for a reopening of the case? Yes, I'm the one having the issue. The parking in my area, going to the barber shop. Well, the issue, the issue that we're, I think, discussing here is one that was stated that you were unable to access the process. Is that correct? Yes, that is. So, Madam Chair, I think that, and Lori, I mean, weigh in here. Is that the, really the issue before us, not his individual objection, et cetera, but the fact that right, he wasn't able right. to voice it? I mean, basically, the bottom line here is through no fault of anybody, but except the COVID thing and the, the Zoom meetings, this person was not able to testify and wanted to. If he went to court and objected on that basis, it's likely a court would send it back for a new hearing. I mean, that, that has nothing to do with the merits of his objection or, you know, whether the board should reverse its decision. Um, it's just a matter of procedure that he did it's just like if he came to the meeting and was not allowed to speak, basically. I mean, right. it is unfair to the appellant. I understand their concerns. I, I think the safest legal position to take, though, is to reopen it just to allow this person to talk. You would not have to allow, you know, the, the if there, I don't even remember if there were other neighbors who complained about this or whatever, just to allow his testimony to be heard and then the board could make its decision. That sounds like solid legal advice to me. Yes. So I would make the motion that we would reopen the case. I wouldn't put any limits on who can testify at this point, but obviously the next door neighbor, uh, sir, you will have to make sure you're at the meeting because you're the one driving this particular request for additional opportunity to voice your concerns. So whatever date, and let's do it quickly so we don't hold this project up any longer than we have to. We squeeze it in on the 19th or whatever? Yes, yes, we absolutely can do that. Okay. Mr. Quinones? Alex? Yes, that's me. How are you doing? Okay. okay, we're going to postpone it to to hear you in front of us on April the 19th. Okay, same time. Same, same. time, 19th. Okay. Yes, thank you. And also, is the appellant available as well? Yes. Um, could we get a copy of the uh, of Al's concerns? We thought it was the the person to the north, not to the uh, West. So let's see if we can resolve those concerns. Okay. Liz? Right. Good luck on that. Can you send a copy of the email to okay. uh, Mr. Fisher? Okay. Okay. Thanks, Thank everybody. you. All right. Without objection. Without objection. Without objection. Okay. Great. Okay. Thank Thanks you. all. Okay. That's all. We need an affirmation on the Warren Road on Matt Diddleson. 
was granted to erect a carriage house on July 13. They couldn't do it because of the COVID. Hello, welcome to our world. Without objection. Objection, yep. Okay. And you all saw that uh, B. Arcanez's appeal from the was denied by the Common Pleas Court. Did we win or lose? We won. Oh, okay. It's always right. good to hear. No, they, they affirmed the decision of the Board of Zoning Appeals. That's what I mean. We won. We won. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I thought I heard something else. Okay. Okay, great. But you think, uh, Liz, you're thinking that they are going to uh, appeal it to the uh, Eighth court, District Court? I have no idea. Yeah. Let's wrap it up. It is Beer okay. Canez, though. Yeah. Okay. Is that it? We, we got, that's it. We'll see you all next Monday. All right. Thank, thank you. you. So, was that Town Hall right. project approved or is it oh, they right, were wait, they're denied? Sorry. Excuse me, Shannon. What are you look, asking? Was the Canez Townhouse project there on Bridge? Is that going to be able to go through or they're denied? No. No, they, the, the Board of Zoning Appeals upheld the City Planning Commission's denial of the project, uh, so it will not be moving forward. Okay. Unless they appeal it, you know, they can appeal it to uh, the 8th District Court of Appeals, I guess. So. Adios. Thanks. Adios, Bye. everyone. Have a blessed Bye. week. Bye. You too, thanks. Bye. Maurice, do you need me to stay on? Uh, no, you said you're going to send me, if you can just send me, you know, even if it's just a quick list of the places I need to photograph on Tuesday, you know, tomorrow, that's all I need. Yep, yeah, we'll do. You know, I'm two weeks ahead now and I would like to stay that way. I will not be here on May, I believe the 17th. So we'll probably have, I think I've already asked Kyle to sit in for me. So just so you know, so it helps to be ahead. Right. Okay. So, all right. Bye bye, everyone. Okay. Right. Bye. bye bye. I'll talk to you tomorrow, uh, Maurice. Yes, that sounds good. We after will talk DPNS. tomorrow. Right after, yeah, right after DPNS, we can just get on our own.